Adam. Thank you. 
Yes, I am going to be the one who is Robert Chagulani Center. We are going to be the one who is President Robert Chagulani Center. We are going to be the one who is going to be the one who
Rashida Nambo wa Chairperson Elect Utambala District. Zam Chene Mandiji, NLP. Joel Sanyoni, Nakawa Hustle. David Lewis, Pico Power. Thank <laughs> you. 
very much. Uh, excuse me, Madam Program Director. I wanted to speak to you even this so I wanted to be in the middle. Comment what we went through was well. And I really take the welcome back from that danger zone. Just this morning when I was coming here, we branched to this route. And once again, my eyes saw the spot which I was not supposed to survive from. The first, the very first gunshot attempt at us, where the only person myself and a few others survived the death. I thank to God. And I was further reminded that we have a mission to accomplish. Friends, we did not survive for nothing. No. God was speaking to us through our survival. We are here for a reason. God kept us alive so that we can at least be able to accomplish something. So it is not a mistake that we are here. It is not fun that we are here. Welcome from hell, all of you comrades. We did it, we only have to accomplish it. Speaking to you, standing before you this afternoon, throws my mind back some three years or something ago. When myself and ten other friends went to a similar two days retreat. For some three years ago, only about three months after the parliamentary election of 2017, where I had become member of parliament, we had a small study group of friends. We used to call, we still call ourselves the patriotic friends, but it was 11 of us. We decided to take a retreat and for the first time seriously and frankly talk about the future of our country. It is three years ago. It was 11 of us. Among those 11 people with whom we took that retreat and the most important thing we came, that came out of that two days retreat two days and two nights was the word people power, our power. We didn't know where it would go, but at least it had been invented in that retreat. Thank you very much. My children, one, two, one, two. <laughs> so, like I was saying in the comments, my mind went back. Among those 11 people, only three ran for office. Four and the fourth. Among those 11 people. And among those four that ran, only one ran. Okay, I also was not announced. That was some three years ago. So coming to this retreat, this recent cup, so much was running in my mind, looking back at the wins and the losses, the ups and downs. My late father used to talk about to have to love a statement by Shakespeare. He would say, let us think, eat and celebrate for ourselves and the general happiness of the company and our friends abroad. But we are here. The friends of God that Shakespeare met were those that did make it to that particular moment. So once again, I tell you, comrades, that let us celebrate, let us stamp our chest, let us thank God for the few wins and overcomings that we've been able to register for us and our friends that did make it. But we are here. So now that we are here, not just 11 people, but many, you, the elected leaders, members of parliament, local government leaders, and leaders in different other levels. And also, knowing that thousands, in fact hundreds of thousands, as a matter of fact, millions of Ugandans sharing the same mind, sharing the same thoughts, and walking in the same path, have adopted that, that is no mean thing. But we are here. 
It is my hope and prayer before we start, ladies and gentlemen. It is my hope and prayer that we still have the same mind, that the same thoughts, the same aspirations, and same goals and desires. I want to welcome all of you to this retreat, ladies and gentlemen. It is at this level where we look back and count our wins and our losses. While we are here as the elected leaders, and more particularly those that were announced, as we are here, it is very, very important to know that for us to get here, we've had to go through thick and thin, and many of our friends did not make it to this moment. I want to suggest that we all stand up and observe the moment of silence for our friends that did not make it alive today. May their souls rest in eternal peace. I also want us to remind ourselves of what our eyes see and what our ears hear, not only in this room, but all over the country and beyond. We are dressed like this not because we want. We are dressed like this because many of our friends put themselves in harm's way, took the risk, and indeed, are paying the price. Many, like I mentioned, did not make it alive. Many are nursing wounds, both physical and psychological, <coughs> that were inflicted on them, courtesy of this our struggle. And many of them are in prison. But we are here. We thank God that we are here. And again, it's my hope and prayer that we find it in our hearts to constantly see the need to represent those people. Those people that took it upon themselves to represent us in hell. They are there. Because the regime knows that by incarcerating them, maybe they're weakening them, maybe they're breaking their, their, their backs, maybe they're weakening us, or maybe they are drawing a wage between us and those common people that stand for us because those people that are in prison represent the masses, they represent the common people, they trust in us as their leaders, we are their leaders, they voted for us and the majority of us, there was no rig rigging space, that is how we were able to be announced, we salute them. Friends, we are looking at the losses and the people that died, and those that are in prison. But it's very important, even when you look at the wounds, to look at the wins. I was deliberate on giving you the background for you to know that it had started long before me. But again, that little connection of me and a few friends, less than a dozen, could spark an idea. I always listen to fellow artists, there's a man called Tupac. Tupac Shapu said, I'm not sure that I will change the world, but I can guarantee you that I will spark the brain that will change the world. That is what we must continue saying. It is not about we as individuals, but about what we spark in other people. Maybe the people that inspired me didn't know I would come to these things. And maybe, you might not be aware that the people that you are inspiring are actually going to become great assets to this country. So it is important that we count those blessings, that we celebrate the fact that we are here more than a hundred elected MPs, elected mayors, councillors, etc. We should celebrate the fact that we were able to massively awaken a nation to awaken an entire generation. Just three years ago, young people didn't want to know what was going on in politics. Just three years ago, a huge amount of Ugandans, especially young people, 
We are disconnected from how they are governed. We didn't know what happens in parliament. We are not interested. So we must celebrate the fact that we have awakened an entire generation. <laughs> that we have connected generations, the young and the old. We have connected classes. We have connected genders. We have connected the people of Uganda. Now the people of Uganda are no longer identified or they no longer look at each other in terms of their tribes or their genders or their regions. They are connected by the pains and the hopes. The pains they are going through and the hopes that they envision for this, our country. And it's both good and bad news that we are the representation of those aspirations. We here, it is good news because it's such an honor, but it's bad news because it puts a big load on our shoulders, ladies and gentlemen. A very big load. When we celebrate for having one, I want you to know always that they gave us a big responsibility and we ran a big risk. Because to whom so much is given, so much is expected. And those are the expectations that the people of Uganda have in us today. So while we are here, ladies and gentlemen, thinking about those that are strong, thinking about those that are in prison, and of course agitating for more, it is important to identify what drives those our people and what drives us. I'll tell you what drives me. What drives me is the fact that the entire nation believes in us. What drives me is the fact that the entire nation is experiencing what we are talking about. You do not have to be told, you do not have to be present, to be prepared as a leader to go and communicate. You only have to say what you go through every day or what your people go through every day. I am motivated by the fact that the people of Uganda have largely taken a lead and we the leaders are only connecting with the people who we do not have to convince. I'm aware that so many of you did not have to use so much money as you had prepared your mind. All of us know politics is expensive because Museveni has monetized politics in this our country. But because the idea of people power that we were presenting to the people had already been naturally sold into them. So we likely didn't have to spend. As a matter of fact, the people who were asking votes from likely spent on us. So that gives us a debt. That makes us very accountable to those our people. I'm talking largely on this, ladies and gentlemen, because I want you to see I want us to know who we are, at least in the face of the people. We are not the traditional politicians. No, they sent us into those offices, or they attempted to send us into those offices because they largely view us as liberators. When the people of Machinde look at the one Nyoko Deri, they are looking at themselves going into parliament. They are looking at their own boy or their own that they sent to parliament. Many of you defeated very, very strong people. You defeated ministers with all the government machinery. You defeated the so-called untouchables. That was the representation of people power. But it did not end on that day that you were announced winner. As a matter of fact, it started on that day. That is the day the people in your constituency took over and then handed that power and responsibility to you. And that is why I say it is a heavy load on you. Luckily, it is a load that you can very, very comfortably carry because your people, according to what I see, are ready to carry that load with you. Especially if you stick by the aspirations, if you stick by what you preached during the campaigns. 
So ladies and gentlemen, what drives me is the faith that people are with us and the faith that you are going to stand by those values. Not because we sit here and your president tells you that stick to those values, but because I know that the people who voted for you are going to hold you accountable. These are already awakened people. I see it tempting us many times to try and fit into the Honorable MP stature, in the mayor stature. I can see many of us already fighting to fit in, which is natural and normal, but we are not living in normal times. And our people are not looking for a leader to fit into the image of an MP. No, that's not what they're looking for. So don't feel in such a rush to buy the most expensive car, to buy the best suit, to grow a big stomach. Don't feel in such a rush. It is important that people continue to see you for what they voted for. They might not tell you that. As a matter of fact, they might tell you that when it's already too late, when they are blaming you. And for people like my good friend Simba, who already had his weight, <laughs> you might be in trouble. You know, that was a light moment, don't take him very seriously, but he has weight and it's questionable for the voters. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to discuss quite a lot, but most importantly, to prepare our minds. One, for what is at stake, for what we are facing, and what we are about to face in the coming days. First and foremost, where are we? We are in a country that is led by a brutal dictator who is very smart, who has mastered the art of being a benevolent dictator, who has mastered the art of running a you know, a, 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 I'm looking for a word that explains a dictatorship that puts a semblance of democracy. I know that while we are here in this retreat, we are all expecting a raid from either the police or the military. Even when General Museveni is holding a retreat with his NRM MPs spending taxpayers' money. The people that are on our t-shirts are in prison. Many of them are being held and tortured. I choose of wearing military uniforms. But as we speak right now, Museveni's MPs, who are civilians, are putting on full military uniform in his full view. That's where we are. We are in an absolute dictatorship that is going to try as much as possible to sanitize itself, and sadly so, using some of us, because that is an effort they are trying. Where we are today, sitting in a comfortable air-conditioned room, but knowing that the people we represent are going through the worst. What is at stake? if we don't win. If we don't win this struggle, it might take the people of Uganda back so many years. If we don't win this struggle, which Museveni is struggling so much to ensure that we fail, it will mean that there will only be trials and no success. If we don't win this struggle, it means constant death of our people. Forget the deaths in hospitals, because there are no drugs. Forget the death of women giving birth. Forget the children that die in uh, avoidable situations. I'm talking about the death, the state-sanctioned murders. On a daily, in your constituencies, people are being abducted, picked, tortured, women raped, etc, etc. So we must remind ourselves why we sit here, to not be comfortable, to not think that it is you know, normal, it is formal, we are um, members of parliament, so we are treated as such. No, we are not being treated as such. And as a matter of fact, the people that we represent are being hounded, murdered, and that is not going to stop. 
I want us to have that state of mind. We are in a state of war. We are in a war only that on our side, we choose non-violence. But the regime has its violence in full gear. I want us to be reminded of that. If we have that at the back of our mind, and anchor all our thoughts and all our deliberations on that, we will be connected to our people. But if we think that now we are members of parliament that are only concerned with the legislation which is largely predetermined by Museveni and then sends his MPs to just rubber stamp it, we will be wrong. It is important that we are constantly reminded of the real facts that are ongoing. Some of us that read the Bible, there's this story of the children of Israel when they were coming from captivity. They were heading to uh, Canaan, but there's a place that they reached before, and many of them relaxed. And yet Canaan was still ahead. Some of them actually died there. So please don't die along the way. Don't feel like you've arrived. We are not where we are supposed to be. I was speaking to one of the leaders and uh, he indeed was worried because he said the biggest problem to the struggle are those politicians that win positions. We have a duty to debunk that. We have a duty to be seen that indeed people entrusted us and we are pushing their struggle ahead. We must not relax. Um, I will also remind you of some of the things that many people don't want to talk about, that there's an attack on everything and everyone, on every institution. Some of our Muslim friends were just mourning the death of their sheikhs, and we all know that their deaths are questionable. And then we, the Catholics, are also mourning deaths of our eminent um, religious leaders, and it's clear that the dates are questionable. In the recent past, you've all been on social media, and you've seen what is ongoing. What you see is real. That is where we are as a country. And it's important for us not to relax because the enemy, the oppressor, has not relaxed. Our people every now and then are motivated to know that, okay, now this time we have more members of parliament. Maybe our agitation will be more. Now we have uh, more mayors, we have more leaders. Those comrades are fronts for the fight. They are not eating places. They are not relaxing places. In Luganda, Bachita Chwe Jwe Jonga Womo Deta Natuka Temu Womo La Mikwano Jag. There's no time to rest. And there's going to be every of effort, those that are visible and those that are discreet, to ensure that you relax your mind, that you be at peace, that you fit in in your new profile as a member of parliament, as a mayor, to be at peace, to start thinking of business, to start marrying a second wife. Do not be taken by that, comrades. That has been the undoing of most of the people that have been struggling against M7. There's going to be every effort, of course, to do, uh, divert us and divide us, most importantly, as the best way to derail us. Um, I want to briefly remind all of you that we started out as a people power movement, which was and is still owned by the people of Uganda, which is the rallying call, because that is what we represent to you today here. When we came up with the national unity platform, that we told our people that it is the political wing of people power. And indeed, the national unity platform is serving an idea, which idea is people power. We must ensure that people continue to see us as a representation of people power. To ensure that they don't see us as yet another political party that comes to fit in the political terrain and then proceed. 
We must constantly be answerable to those our people. We must constantly be a representation of people power. You are people power registered. You are people power elected. And your bosses are still the people of Uganda. It is extremely important to remember that and act that. And uh, before I conclude, comrades, I want you to know that you are the first of that idea. You can make it, you can break it. You can motivate the people of Uganda, you can deflate them completely by what you do and what you don't do. That's the kind of responsibility that you are as members that, that you have as members of parliament that you have as mayors as councillors as leaders of this our party as leaders of this our idea like i said we promised to people that we will be their servants and they will be our bosses we promised a new uganda and even before we arrive there they must see us working and representing that new uganda with what we can we have a certain extent of ability at least so people must see that new uganda because as we move we're moving to becoming government the struggle is still ongoing but at least you have a certain front so what you do on that front is going to reflect so much on what the people do on the ground very importantly so i'll also comrades remind all of you as uh, elected leaders to live like those people who elected you we have a population that is very very easily detachable to the leader especially if they see you changing from the person that you were I'm not a perfect person, but at least I want to try as much as possible to give an example or a sample of an NUP leader, of a people power leader. Our people might be worried that now that you're there, like all politicians, speak very nicely before you are voted into office. And as soon as you are voted into office, <laughs> So here we are. And that's what I'm telling you, comrades. You are in no rush to buy new suits. You are in no rush to buy a new car. I would actually discourage those fancy and expensive cars. They don't only detach you from the struggles, the daily struggles of the people, but it even saves your money. You are in no rush to fit in. That is not what to represent. All of us were, you know, beating up uh, President Magufuli when he discouraged like Zarias. Not that you shouldn't live nice, but be a representation of what we would be if we were in office. What are we representing? Because what you do is what the people will see. You would have you are a minister or if you are in government. It has to start with you, the individual. Then from you, the individual, it goes to us as a team. And from us as a team, it will trickle down to the nation. It's very important that we communicate that, that we continue to be the reflection of those our people. Don't fall in love with money. Don't, you know, set your bar high. You would eat and get satisfied in your youth. But when you go to that kafunda, it is not just the eating. You might not know, but that's where you get most of your communication. That's where you connect with the people. That must not be lost. Of course, there's some, so much more that we'll discuss when uh, the media is out of here. But it was important to let you know, comrades, that we must keep the hope alive.
and that hope is represented by you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep the hope alive. The world is looking at us. People are watching us. They're looking at what we do and what we fail to do. And lastly, I will tell you that Museveni is targeting you. The reason why we took quite a while to metamorphosize into a political party is because Museveni has mastered the art of dealing with the political parties. They look out for the leader, they look out for somebody that holds office, or they look out for the most outspoken and compromise them. Of course, targeting either their greed or their fear. So be aware that you're being targeted. You're being followed by the dictator's compromising efforts, and you're being followed by the eyes of the people whose hopes are entirely on you. I am confident that you can overcome that. I am confident that we'll be back in yet another retreat where none of us has veered off. But again, I want to inform you of this so that you know. And as we communicate, I'm sure some of the more experienced comrades will update us on how Juno Museven has been operating for the last 35 years. But all those challenges, comrades, are surmountable. We are here with the people that have overcome those challenges and temptations. And yes, we know people that have failed to overcome those challenges and uh, temptations, and we know how they ended up. Because at the end of the day, nobody can ever win the people. Nobody. Now, very finally, I want you to know that what we are up to is moral. We are not wrong to be into this. We've been able to overcome all challenges, not because of our power, not because we are too intelligent, but because even God is on the side of those that are suffering. So if we go against the values that God has selected, the values that God, that, that, you know, God has protected by God, we will, will not only be betraying the people of Uganda, but we will be betraying God. But if we stick and hang in there, if we persevere, which I'm confident we will, friends, I can guarantee you that you will find many more people joining us and leaving the dictator because he has nothing more to promise them other than intimidate them. I was watching General Museveni telling members of parliament that he doesn't like how they deliberate. He doesn't want members of parliament standing up and raising points of order and points of information because he's used to ordering them. And that's why he dresses them in military uniform as if they are going there to serve the military. We were deliberate to dress like this, to remind ourselves that these are the representation of suffering Ugandans who did not go in the comfortable workplaces that we've been elected to, but these are the people we are accountable to. These are the people to whom we owe our offices. These are the representations of the millions and millions of the people of Uganda who, if we continue representing, we shall bring the, the people power that we say we are. So with those few remarks, comrades, I welcome you, and I want to wish you fruitful deliberations for God and my country.
for reminding us that we're not in the normal time. And therefore, we should not go into comfort zones. We must live and lead as nations of our people who elected us. Thank you, thank you, Mr. President. We may applause him once again. Thank you, Mr. President. I forgot to introduce your seniors, your colleagues, the deputy presidents. Allow me to introduce the deputy president, Honorable Nambe Shed John Baptist, MP Manjia. Mr. President from Eastern Region. Also, allow me to introduce uh, Dr. Jolie K. Gisha, K. Gisha, the Deputy President, Western Region. People power. Our power. Our strength is that soft voice. She really fought a good goal during campaigns. Thank you, Mama. You take a very good part for us, especially for Western Region. Allow me also to introduce Honorable Masias Mpuga, who is our deputy president of Uganda, but also member of Parliament Masaka Municipality and member of Parliament elect for Nyendo Mukungwe. But let me quickly mention that the member of parliament elect for PG is here, PG district, stand up for recognition quickly. Member of parliament, I'm going to mention the names, because we are there. Member of parliament, Mokono district, elect is here. Member of parliament, elect royal district is here. Member of parliament, elect for Nakawa East is here. People power. Member of Parliament of Common City North is here. And also Member of Parliament of Match in the South is here. People power. Yes, I will the rest if I see you, please come again. I'm extremely sorry. We are resting again as time. The president has so much reminded us to stand by the aspirations of the people and the work that we told our people. Then that means at this time. We must invite people who will remind us of who we are and what we stand for. And nobody else is best suited to speak about that under my Secretary General, who will hand it together with our spokesperson, the member of Parliament, David Nakao West. Secretary General, you're welcome to talk about the party ideology, values, and the rest that you will see if we talk about. Welcome, my Secretary General. People power, our power, our power, people power, NUP, everywhere, everywhere, NUP. Mr. President, uh, Deputy President, uh, Deputy Secretary General, members of the National Executive Committee, uh, members of the Parliamentary Caucus, members of the Local Government Caucus, uh, comrades in the struggle for freedom and democracy, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are very delighted to have you here today in our retreat. And uh, I'm glad that uh, all of us are putting on the way we are putting on to make sure that um, we keep reminding ourselves, even when we are here, that many people have paid uh, incredible sacrifices for us to stand here today and uh, be able to advance this cause. Uh, Madam Deputy uh, Secretary, you did not uh, introduce or talk about uh, our Deputy President from Northern Region. She will be uh, saying hello to us anytime now, but she's uh, been out of the country. But uh, she will be speaking to us uh, via Zoom at an, at an opportune time. Now, my duty is really to uh, speak about NUP and uh, what we stand for. But I will take a very short time because uh, we, we started very late and we have very many programs to deal with today and tomorrow. Uh, the first thing I'll talk about is what is our vision. Uh, when we went into this election, we had a very big debate, and I remember the Honorable uh, Member of Parliament uh, for Mitiana, a uh, woman member of Parliament, was there in that meeting. And when we were trying to come up with uh, the slogan for our campaign, and uh, after debating many of them, we came up with this whole idea of a new Uganda. And we said that we were promising Ugandans a new Uganda, 
If, uh, Comrade Joel, I think your slogan was uh, fresh, a, 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 a breath of fresh air. And that's what we are looking at in Uganda, a, a breath of fresh air in the, in the politics of our country, in the governance of our country, ETC. So what is our vision as NUP? Our vision is a free, united, prosperous, and democratic Uganda which empowers citizens, adheres to the rule of law, ensures dignity, and provides equal opportunities for all. That is the new Uganda we were promising the citizens to the election, but that is the new Uganda which we are promising even today. A free, united, prosperous, and democratic country which empowers the citizens of this country, adheres to the rule of law, ensures dignity, and provide equal opportunities for all. I think each of these things, I can speak about them for a full day, but because of time, I'm not going to them. But maybe to just talk about a free country. We want to live in a free country. We want to live in a united country. The current regime has tried so much to divide this country, and we want to live in a united Uganda. A Uganda where people do not uh, refuse to give you a, jo a job simply because of your first name or your last name. A Uganda where you are not treated as a second class citizen simply because of where you come from or because of your religion, it is ETC. We want to have a prosperous country. The regime here has been promising prosperity for all, but in fact, what has been created is poverty for all, for many, and uh, prosperity for just a few people. We are saying well, there should be prosperity uh, for, for the citizens of this country. We are looking at the democratic Uganda, but above all, we are looking at an empowered citizen. And I think that's what the president has been talking about, where our people become the bosses. And we implore you, our leaders, to make sure that the people who elected you will become true bosses and you will be their servant. We want a country which ensures dignity. One time I went with uh, our president and, and the King of Nigeria and other leaders to Mulago, where you no know, citizens go when they get accidents and all that, they can't have the one. You see the indignity there. You see the kind of problems. People are having to sleep on the floor. And that is if they are lucky to find space. Some of them are just outside there. And you know, any citizen can get an accident anytime. And then they take you to a country for what? And then you find these people who are one foot on top of the other. They are all bleeding. Uh, uh, Broke in these uh, cars, common laws are known as Kavanga. So, one to try and have dignity for the citizens of this country, and finally equal opportunities. What then is our mission? Our vision, I've talked about, our mission is to rally the people of Uganda, to exercise their power, and build a free, united, prosperous, and democratic Uganda. Every day as a leader of NUP, ask yourself, what have I done to advance this mission? Because it's our mission. Our vision is not where we want to go, our mission is how we want to go there. Every day we want to rally the people of Uganda, to decide their power. Article 1 of the Constitution of our country says that all power belongs to the people of Uganda. And we are saying that all the people of Uganda must be empowered. Every day must be right. We do not believe in doing things for the people, but we believe in helping the people realize their full potential and being able to reach where they want to reach. So we want to rally the people of Uganda to exercise their power and build that country which we all so much desire. I will not talk about the values, uh, Comrade Joe will talk about them, but I want to talk about the core governance issues. What is the character of NUP as a political party? And I'm uh, very glad the Prince President talked about the fact that while we are having a political party, we still have a movement. And the political party, in fact, is under the movement. The movement is people power. This people power idea brings together all Ugandans who feel oppressed who feel neglected, who feel disempowered, who want to take this country forward. So people power is that core idea which we stand on. But NUP as a political party, first of all, it is a social democratic party. The social democratic party, you can later on check and see what that means. But uh, NUP is a social democratic party which is guided by the principles, seven principles, one, servant leadership, equality, transparency, accountability, freedom, liberty, and social justice.
I'll just uh, say that NUP is a social democratic party. Uh, there are different kinds of, uh, of uh, parties and as I said, you have enough time to go. If you all those, maybe we'll have a chance to talk about it. But we're a social democratic party guided by the principle of summer leadership, which I already talked about. Summer leadership. I want to be summer leader. And maybe at this point I'll tell you about that for me. Uh, what attracted me so much to many uh, of you know my background, previous the NRM, then uh, I come meet this gentleman who was uh, an artist, very famous. I meet him in my class. I walked him into the class, boom, and I, I, I saw him seated there. And uh, I, I said good evening, and then he was saying good evening, sir. You know, this is a celebrity of, uh, you know, uh, with a very big name and all that. And the next month, I realized that he's a very humble person, but above all, he's a leader. One time, I went with him. Um, he invited me to Musawara. We went to Musawara, and then we went to Sowe, an island there, where you meet people who call the wretched of the earth. People who are very, very, I don't know how many of you have been to that island, or Sowe island. Really, people living in absolute poverty, very, very terrible condition. And here he was. We, we went by, by the board, and then I could see the connection that he had with these people. And for me, that was uh, enough to tell me that I was in the right place. So can we all be servant leadership? Servant leadership is one of those uh, core principles. Equality, uh, transparency, accountability, freedom, liberty, and social justice. Uh, social justice both with so many things, and today, this afternoon, we are going to have a presentation about the social economic problem of Uganda and how it can be resolved. So, we have built so much in social justice. There is another important point here. I will, maybe for the first time, with your permission, I will say that other comrades, take the president, to say that when we were, were setting out to have a political party, there were very many political parties which were actually clamoring. So why don't you come and become members of this party and take it forward? But the reason why we selected NUP is simply because we believe firmly in the unity of Uganda as a nation state. And so that's another thing. NUP believes in the unity of Uganda as a nation state and shall oppose any attempts to divide the country along tribal, religious, or regional lines. That's one of our core principles and values. There were other political parties with very beautiful names, and I can still talk about them. But the most important, the reason why we thought NUP was our home is because we believe in national unity. And that is why the regime has been so desperate to portray us as a regional uh, party, as what, and sometimes they've gone as far as saying, ah, you people, the were of this one and Katana and others, uh, kill our vibe. Those only want to clap those people and say they are of a certain place, then we see some of you there. What, what, what are they doing with them? But that is because they know the importance of unity. We believe in the, 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 the unity of Uganda as a nation state. The other thing is that NUP is a progressive pattern which shall pursue international cooperation with progressive nations and organizations along economic, social, and political lines. So we believe in our progressive ideas and a progressive agenda. Now, what, uh, what I can summarize as um, what you would call our manifesto, but I'll just call it. Uh, here we say that the NUP shall seek the mandate of the people of Uganda to govern the country and work for reforming forward governance issues. Who are in power today? What would we prioritize? The first thing is national unity and reconciliation. Most important is national unity. Make sure that there is national unity. The second one is sovereignty of the people. We want the people of Uganda to be sovereign. Not on paper. In the constitution it says that all power belongs to the people. But you all know that in this country, power does not belong to the people at all. We want to live in a country where people feel powerful. And we've got, many of you have traveled, have traveled to some countries where the citizens actually think that they have the power. Mm. That the citizens can force a, a prime minister to resign overnight. That the people can decide what happens. But here in this country, those who rule over us have all the power. 
And once the guns come out, the citizens are silenced. We want to change that trajectory. The other issue is that Uganda's national independence. That is very important. We believe that uh, Uganda got independence, but uh, we are not fully independent. We are saying that one of the core issues is regarding Uganda's national independence. The fourth one is building a dynamic, mixed economy with a strong social conscience. Now, dynamic, mixed economy, you all know what that means. But our best focus on strong social conscience. That our economy or the economy, the, 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 the economy that we build must have a strong social conscience. Not, not, not an economy which works for a few against the many, not an economy which looks at the political class as against the citizens, the ordinary citizens, but we must ensure that there is a strong social conscience uh, in our economy. The other issue, of course, is respect for human rights, constitutionalism, and the rule of law. Any UP in power would ensure that there is respect for human rights, that there is constitutionalism, and that there is the rule of law. All rights, there are two. I used to be a constitutional law uh, lecturer. Hopefully, I'll go back to that at some point. But there is a difference between a constitution and constitutionalism. And Professor Joe Oroka, one of those who do the constitutional law, famously said that you can have a constitution without constitutionalism. In Uganda, we have a constitution, but we have no constitutionalism. The constitution is a mere piece of judgment which is swept away at the whims and wishes of those in power. But what we want is that judgment as just a mere judgment that is that we can breathe life into, and that is what I talk about constitutionalism. That there must be respect. Adherence to the rule of law and adherence to the constitution. That's what builds a nation. To make sure that what is written in that constitution guides us and governs us. Those of us here who are religious, the first book should be that religious book we have, whether the Bible or the Holy Quran. And then the second one should be the constitution of our nation. To make sure that we go by it, we abide by it. And the constitution is not just swept away whenever we think it is inconvenient. And that is why the dictatorship in this country has been doing, that whenever the constitution uh, becomes an impediment to them, they just sweep it away. If you look at that constitution, about uh, the role of the military, about the role of the police, and how they should be behaving, we have chapter four of the constitution. I hope all members of parliament have gotten copies of the constitution. I would encourage all of you to read that constitution. Even other leaders, local government leaders, please get the constitution and read it. Because it gives you your first year to be important. But we have a whole chapter about human rights and civil, civil liberties. For example, in this country, none of us here can organize a peaceful demonstration. Even one act of the of our constitution clearly says that there shall be a right to peacefully demonstrate and protest peacefully and unarmed. But that has been reduced to nothing. So we want to make sure that there is respect for human rights, constitutionalism, and the rule of law. Uh, those of you who have studied some bit of uh, human rights studies know that it's uh, civil and political rights and social and economic rights. And we, uh, we are committed to both. The other issue that we are committed to is gender equality. Gender equality is extremely important. And I want to really, really, at this point, appreciate the women in the house and thank them for doing incredible things. Unfortunately, the leader of women in uh, uh, of the, of the wing is not here, uh, Honorable Flavia Karune. Uh, she's uh, not feeling very well, but uh, she's with us in spirit. And, uh, but I thank the women who have continued to uh, light the fire yesterday, the women who went out there and protested amid this very difficult situation. Thank you very, 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 very much. The other issue is zero tolerance for corrupt practices. Zero tolerance. Seventy and his regime have been talking about zero tolerance for corruption. But every time they talk about it, they only do it even more. I even wonder how they sleep at night because they talk about water and drink wine uh, or vice versa. But we want to try and be committed to zero tolerance for corrupt practices. And how I wish that NUP leaders would not be found involved in those kinds of practices. 
because we want to bring, uh, bring, uh, bring about a new chapter to our country, uh, fight corruption and make sure that we really, not just in word, but in practice. The other issue, as I'm, I'm about to conclude, okay, okay, I'm making sure that we have set up uh, for Juma prayers, the Muslims can pass me hand. The other issue is a uh, uh, lean and efficient public administration. Lean and efficient public administration. We want to make sure that we have a lean but efficient public administration. The government that we have currently is ex the exact opposite of this. It is not lean, it's too huge, uh, and it is, it is inefficient. We have RDCs, we have uh, uh, different organizations, different organs of state, and there is a uh, duplication of roles. Uh, for example, if I have, if someone has violated my rights today, I can go to the Equal Opportunities Commission, I can go to the Human Rights Commission, I can go to the uh, to the Courts of Law, I can go to if it's a uh, uh, rights related to labor, I can go to uh, the labor court, the industrial court, I can go to. There, there are so many institutions. But they are not efficient. So, if a citizen of Uganda today, your rights are violated. You go to the Human Rights Commission, uh, we went there one day after Arua, and the chairman, the so rest in peace, really took us through the trouble he has, or the, the trouble he had, and, and his inability, the inability of the, of the Human Rights Commission to its function, because it is, it is very controlled by those who can. But in any country, the Uganda Human Rights Commission should be a very, very, I mean, the Human Rights Commission of any country should be an extremely important institution. So I said that we should have a lean but efficient public administration. We go into the district and we find there's an RBC, the Child of Security, there's a DISO, and there's, a, I don't know, all sorts of other layers. We have the Chair Passenger Recipe, we have then the, the cow, we have the cow, then we have the DPC, you know? Then you go down, then you find that you have a, a, a Russo, then a Piso, a Piso, all those kinds of things. And then when it comes to the election, then they say, no, 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 these are not enough. They bring LDUs, then they bring crime preventers, they bring a trouble squad, and all these are feeding off the public uh, pass. So we are saying there should be deep, but efficient public administration. Uh, the, the, the other issue is, uh, Strengthening of state institutions, I think this goes without saying that in Uganda our institutions are not strengthened, they are not independent. Uh, many of them want to wait to hear what has come from state house before they take decisions, but institutions must be strengthened and enabled to do their work. The other one is respect for cultural diversity, that we must uh, respect our culture, but uh, we we'll make sure that we are united in our diversity. Uh, equal access to quality public services, especially healthcare and education. That goes without saying, we must have uh, uh, equal access to quality. There are very important issues. One is equality, equal access, the other is quality services, especially healthcare and education. We believe as NUP that if you have a healthy population, you have a productive population. If you have an educated population, you have a productive population. What kind of education do we get in our schools? What kind of education do uh, the students get at university or even in other institutions? And I think it is deliberate. I always tell people when I was a senior here, many of us here, I'm sure many of you did political education at some point. Uh, or civic education even in primary school until it, it was abolished because we were able to make our young people start thinking and questioning and you know able to uh, understand the history of their country and where it should go. So that is a problem. First, the other one is the eradication of poverty. Uh, the other one is economic, political, and social cooperation with other nations and organizations. That's international relations, security for all persons and their property. Finally, equal equitable distribution of national resources, which I believe uh, the presentation later on will talk about. The party will endeavor, this is very important. We instill in its members a strong sense of patriotism as a foundation for achieving the above our governance issues. Comrades, uh, NRM, of course, has been singing about patriotism, but it's only uh, in what, not in action. Certainly, they don't love their country, 
Here we are, where are the faces of our comrades who are in prison. For no reason whatsoever. For no crime whatsoever. And these people have the guts, the audacity to talk about patriotism. Uh, of course, as time permits later on, we'll discuss other issues. Uh, some of these issues are captured in our party constitution, others are captured in our uh, uh, other documents. Uh, as you know, this constitution is under review, and we later on will be asking uh, your thoughts and, and other things like those. I thank you so much, moderator, and now invite Dr. Joel to speak to us about the values. People power! Our power! Our power! People power! Thank you, Comrade Lowe's. We're going to take a break in uh, 10 minutes, I believe. But let's stand and sing a song. I saw something for me in the days. This is the time, the time, the time. This is the time to say goodbye. Yeah. You know, we, we've been having meetings, we meet as leaders and discuss in a hurry. One hour, and then everybody's off to some. And so it was important that we retreat, take off land, far away from town, because if we have met somewhere near town, many of you would be dashing in and out, running for programs and so on. So we said, let us take you out of town back, so that we can be and concentrate. And that's why we had wanted to all come in. Uh, in the same mode of transport. Then you have come with your car, so it becomes easy to run away. <laughs> but we believe that uh, we are here to be able to connect. I want to very briefly, in about seven minutes at the most, take us through our core values. Um, when, when we sought to set out, we, we believe that certain things were important for us. At the beginning, and as we keep going along the way, and so core values are important for any organization, any entity, even for us as individuals. I'm sure each of you, there is core values that you hold dear to your life. You might not have written them down and put them in your house. Some of you have, some of you haven't. But for each of you, these things that are important. That for me, I cannot do this, or I must be able to do this kind of thing. And so as NUP, there are values that are very important for us. And they must begin with us, the leaders, and then there will be a triple down effect for the people that we live with it. Because if we, we don't espouse these core values, it's going to be difficult for you to tell Kabai, for you to tell Kidawits. These sound like botanical names. These are people that's when you be for you. <laughs> it's going to be difficult for the quote unquote ordinary person to pick up on these values. And so we summarized our core values in something called drifts. D, R, double I, F, S. D, R, double I, F, S. Now each of those letters stands for something. D stands for discipline, R, reliability, the first I, inclusiveness, the second I, integrity, F, fidelity, S, service. I'm going to run through them uh, from our perspective, but you can go to this. You're all leaders, you're all competent in many respects, you're all wise, many of you are older than some of us, but uh, no worries. So, discipline. Something that I've learned over the years is that as a leader, you, you cannot give what you don't have. That's a fact. So, uh, as leaders, we, we expect people to be disciplined. And that's important. 
But you see, we cannot expect it to be disciplined if we are not disciplined. The kind of discipline we are talking about is both public discipline and private discipline. Some of us are good at public discipline. Those have been telling you about seven years. So they are grandiose, talk about corruption and so forth. And behind the scenes, him and his people are absconding with billions of the land and that's more fun. So the discipline we are talking about is both public and private. And that some of it will embody you know, seemingly little things, but which are very important. I have been in the media for what? For 14 years. And many times we could see the discipline of leaders. Sometimes they see in small things, yeah? But which eventually bring down a leader. You find a leader in a drunken stupor. Is a, an MP who wants, you know, we, we go to those circumstances and uh, try to cover up the story and the difficult. We say, no, I even answer the video. One want, want good leader. We are not going to cover up this one. You know, the fellow who to run has always been picked up in bars. At one point, he urinated at people, an officer. This is great. Now, I, I know, yes, I did it like this. You would expect that how we should be discussing strategies and all these different things. But you see, if tomorrow one of the doctors is writing about you and somebody who speaks up in bars, it doesn't matter how much you you speak. It doesn't matter whether you save seven years in day, the people are thinking, you know, you cannot be our leader. And so we think this is important. Both public discipline for us as leaders and private Now, we are the young man. Any of you are even teach to be my partners and see each other. And so maybe it should be you telling each other these things. But it is okay in my small capacity, maybe I'm You see, Private leadership for a leader is what, in my view, eventually results in what we see publicly. Because there are things that you cannot hide as an individual and as a leader. So if, if there are some new habits that, and we all have our own habits, but not the way to become a leader, then habits must die. Because they are going to blow up at some point. That's for sure, whether you like it or not. Because you see, many of us have been behind the scenes. Well, for me, as a team, so maybe some of you will be before here. And, and so some of you, you have come in the line like because you're a leader. And so the small, small little things are going to come out. Because now you're in the line right. And then you're not going to assume only yourself, but all of us. Because now I'll be getting phone calls from these media people. Ah, now secondly, so there is this MP of yours that uh, we want to do in ABCD. What is your comment? These media people can be annoying. <laughs> I know because I was like them. And, and so you engulf all of us. And so it's important that we have discipline both publicly and privately. No, we are not saying we are going to become angels. No. But interestingly, people have a certain expectation of us. And the sad reality, those people, the ordinary people, the people that we represent, they will do some of those silly things, and they don't expect you, their leader, to do them. That's, that's a sad reality for leadership. They will steal, they will be all over the place, get drunk and so on. But if a drunk can follow here, if their MP was found drunk on the road, be like, yeah, what about that? <laughs> this is the drunk who said that. And that's a sad reality, because we have chosen to become leaders. So people have certain expectations of us. We must not let them down. Our reliability. One of the things that bothers me about Mr. Museveni and his leadership is that we cannot rely on them as leaders. We cannot bank on them. Today they will say A, and tomorrow will say B, and so on and so forth. We must be reliable. That image must come out through us, the leaders. And then they will say, hey, these are new people, new people. They, we can rely on them, we can bank on them. People are saying they can rely on you, that's why they want it for you. We cannot let them down. That's very important. People have been let down by leaders time and again. And so for us, we are saying we must be different as one of our core values. We must be reliable. People must be able to say, ah, back out there, whatever the case might be. They must see that. Right. So that's our second core value, reliability. The third core value, inclusiveness. 
I know, and uh, we have talked about these things. They, they said we'll try and write the second narrative. Ah, that NUP thing is only for a particular group of people who are of a particular region in the country. It is our duty to debunk that as leaders. Deliberately, you must be deliberate about that. You know? So everybody must feel welcome. As long as they're saying, I want change, I want to espouse what you espouse, let's bring them on board. Regardless of their tribe. That's something they say is why they use the NUP. And so we must be able to cover that. I'm wearing a t-shirt of a, a gentleman whom many of you know as Bobby Young. You might think Bobby Young is a guy who was born to that pattern in Kambucha by Uganda. Bobby Young is actually a young boy. Now, from Kanu. Kanu. So, there are people who say Kamuenge, there are people who say Kamuenge. But there you are. Bobi Yang is actually from Kamuenge. What is his real name? Is it Akaba? Akaba Andrew. And, and <laughs> when you see him there, you would not imagine maybe he is. But he is. And you can say that for several other people. And, and so we must, very consciously, by the way, as leaders, realize that we should bring everybody in the world. I don't know what is being distributed. My name is it what? <laughs> ah, so it's good. Oh, that, that's also very important. Uh, we want to, by the way, appreciate our brothers and sisters in the community that uh, you found me. I'm hoping this is not inconvenience. I don't even know why you're giving this thing out now. Because some of us are in Swahu, but it's organized in the house. <laughs> So anyway, inclusiveness. We must be able to bring everybody on board. Yeah? Regardless of tribes, regardless of religion, I'm glad there's Muslims here, there's Maroboli like me, there's uh, Catholics, there's Protestants. Regardless, we must all feel that we are part of this thing. The women should never feel like, ah, this thing here is only for the men. And that's very important. And, and women, you should never feel sorry for yourselves. Or try to think, let me wait for some space to be given to me. Take charge. I saw delighted when I saw the women yesterday. I said, hey. <laughs> This is amazing. And, and, and we must, we must keep going. And so, my fellow men, we must let the women. Because some of us, Traditionally, culturally, you saw how your father used to treat your mother. She was always the other side, not talking among the men and so on. Things have changed. I saw on the door of one of my professors when I was finishing my second degree, and it said something very interesting. Humankind is like a two-winged bird. One wing represents the men, the men. One wing, the other wing represents the women. Now, for that bird to fly, both wings must be, must be developed, must be empowered. If only one wing is empowered, that bird cannot fly. That's just the way we are. So as any people must know that if it is only the men that will have the space and the women are kicked out, we are not going to fly, whether we like it or not. Our country actually has majority women, 51%. So inclusiveness, everybody must feel included. Integrity is the other eye. I, I will not elaborate so much on that. It is a freer and the teeth. We must be leaders of integrity. We cannot fight with somebody for not having integrity and then we'll be like him in our small ways. Because it is possible for us to be that you're there, you're heading the district, you have resources that you're supposed to steward over. But you know that you're not stewarding over those resources properly. <coughs> or you're a mayor, or whatever the case might be. We, we just must be leaders with integrity. We are not perfect, but people expect us to do the right thing. The F, which is fidelity. Fidelity is another word for faithfulness. How many married people are in this place? Let's see by show of hands. Yeah, well, you might not necessarily be happily married, but you're married. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have seen the married people. We, 
we, we, and for those who are not married, inclusiveness, we include you also. So feel at home. By the some of you, what is wrong with your family? <laughs> He was going to Magere and he told me, Now you send him. Hmm? So now we are here, but I'm going back home to my wife, baby. She's going to massage me and take good care of me. So for you, when you go home, those cockroaches of yours. <laughs> I said, Now this man, there. Yeah. But thank God, now I can also talk. <laughs> so fidelity, faithfulness. We must be faithful to the people that we are leading. You know, the same way spouses, the husband expects the wife to be faithful and the wife expects the husband to be faithful because there is a covenant. And so we have the covenant with the people who voted for us. Yes, it's a covenant. They voted for us. As NUP, they have entrusted us right from our president because these are the people. These ones, we can come from them. And so we must not let them down. We must be faithful every step of the way. And the people can tell. You know the same way you can just speak to that my spouse. Mm. You know, who is over when you wait, take it, take it. The people can actually tell. You can pretend around, go on talk shows, blast to seven and so on. But if there are holes somewhere, if there are lacunas somewhere, the people can tell. Because they are the ones that voted for you. You are their leader. You are theirs. And so they know when their person has goofed up, has dropped the ball. We must be faithful to the people. Museveni has been unfaithful to us for 35 years, and that's why we're disgruntled. We are in a very disturbing relationship with this man and this government. By force, he will beat us up, jail us, kill our people, steal our money, together with his lot. And that's why we are saying, no, we want to break away from this relationship. We want to have a new catch. And people are saying, our new catch is a new <laughs> And so we, we must not let the people down. You people, I again we were coming from Gulu when the Honorable Chaplain was had been released. And at uh, that time I was actually still at, at NTV, but operating behind the scenes. So I would very quietly do our people power thing, then I ran back. And when we got to Rubaga, we had a discussion. I don't know if you remember that discussion. He was because they had sedated him and so on. Asking the Honorable, did you see what I saw? He said I was asleep much of the time, but did you see what I saw? I asked him. And they said, What? I saw people, I stepped out. People lined up from Guru to Kampala throughout that entire road. I don't know who was with us in that Congo. We had like 50 cars or something. There were people all through. And they delayed us in Guru. They wanted us to leave late, so that we enter Kampala late. And we entered Kampala at about 10 p.m. People waited. I told this gentleman that, Do you see how people love you? If you let down these people, the way they love you, they will hate you times two. I'm sorry, I'm telling them I'm personal conversations. But uh, I'm telling you too, because people love you. Some of you, babies being born in your constituencies are being named after you. It is true. Because they love you, they see you as their savior. If you let those people down, they will, they will hate you. They will hit, you will not be able to eat food anywhere, you will not step at a function, they will loathe you. We, we should be aware of that. But that can only happen once we are faithful to the people. I mean, once we are faithful to the people, that's when they will hate us. But once we are faithful and remain on one, we will keep connecting with the people. Finally, the question of science. You know, we want to seven to go. And uh, people are excited, they are voting for us, they have yet to see what we are able to deliver. They expect that we actually deliver. They expect that we get to connect with them and deliver services using the platform that they have. Because it's not enough to say we're seven in That's important. 
step one. But you see, as an MP, are you actually delivering? As a district chairperson, because you're the president of that district, are you delivering services? Because you see, we must use these positions as platforms for the ultimate change. And we must show people that we have got what it takes to lead you, to lead this country. And we have got what it takes to fix things. How? By using the platforms that we have now. And so it's important that we establish what is the role of an MP if you are an MP. Some of us don't know. I hope they run. If you're a district chairperson, if you're a councillor, you can't kill you, you can't the other day. As many of them actually do not know the responsibilities. And I told them it is okay. But one month from today, if you don't know, it is not okay. So go and learn, establish, and deliver services to the people. That's important. Because you see, and, 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 and you've had some voices say, ah, and I'm a man of but I'm a man of that we can't have no women in Singapore. To have a banana for a month, but also to be in a way to win a set of swans in the other. We should not ashamed this gentleman because he, he is fighting on us. If we move up, and as we keep, because you see, the struggle continues, yeah? And, and ultimately, we must see leadership change in this country. It has not happened yet. Now, some people are excited. How many of you have any of these? You know, there's a guy media was in my case. I said, you now you guys have a beef, you're going to, you know, have the leader of opposition. I don't know these different things. And I said, look, the struggle is certainly not over because we didn't enter this to, to become the opposition leaders. We didn't enter this to be somewhere there. We entered to take over. And until then, we keep striving for that. And so the positions that we are going to occupy now, we are used ultimately as a platform for that. That's why people trust us. That's why our leader trusted us. And, and, and he will talk more about this. He has told us, and he keeps saying, what it means, let's deliver. Because if we don't deliver, he will not be telling people anything. He told people, man, who even sang a song. Amre, what was the song? Amre. I just sang a song. Amre, Amre. And so, whenever he went, he said, that what do Man, holy. And truth is, you know, and I have to say this with the media here, but it's okay. Truth is, some of us were probably voted, not because people knew us, people were voting for the umbrella. And for me, that's okay, that's a good thing. People are saying we have hope in the umbrella. Meaning, whoever the umbrella brings, that's the person of substance. You might not be a celebrity, you might not be known, but people are saying whoever is with the symbol of the umbrella, that one is the one with Mulangwa. And so they voted for us because of the umbrella. We should not let down this umbrella. God bless you. Can we applaud both Joel and Lois? Uh, I'm told it's lunch time. Can I request the President, please allow the Muslims to go, to go for prayers? We are going to have uh, the President, President of the Muslim speak to us. But the uh, permit. Was it on? <laughs> okay, I'm here. It's on. Okay. Zabriga is, Dr. Zabriga is going to speak to us online, and uh, she's already excited to see me here. But with your permission, the Muslims will walk out because we will pass that. We shall have a prayer for seven minutes before we proceed. Thank you. Please, uh, why is your number take over from me? Well, uh, Deputy President Lina wants to just say hello to you and to greet you, but uh, unfortunately, many of you cannot see her. But she's uh, right now on the phone, as you can see. And uh, she's, uh, yeah. Please proceed and uh, say hello to the comrades.
Thank you very much. Comrade Marshall. That was I did the president point of the Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, comrades in the struggle, we are going for a quick lunch. The lunch will take exactly one hour because we are out 30 minutes. Uh, it is well organized. We can eat within 30 minutes. As it has let us take this as a practice because we want to cover everything that uh, the Secretary is organized today. So we shall go where we have the breakfast from, the so break tea, but continue. Uh, to another set up place where we shall have our lunch. We shall be back here at two sharp. <laughs> at exactly two, please let's be here. Uh, we shall check in the house because the is quite uh, close. So we will allow there with all that is happening. We have the lunch, come back here, and then uh, after the evening session, Yes, so Malabi Wageta Media Sawa Yaku Molamuk Funa Picha Puriana Yenga, or you see the cover to where you say the Gambo Vinji Bemori de Okufa Edi Omkurembese Wegwanga, Robert Chagulan Center Moe Kumi, Nateda Nukufedi, Ava Gezia Benja, or Muba de David, Leos Lungoya, Oma de Joel Senyoni, Onuga Mogeswe Chivina, Wongoyanga Ye, 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 Wongoyanga Ye, Ye, Ye. Yes, Ababa Kavana Kumpi, Bazi, Bamea, Baby Gabin, Jaurunga, Wolim, Kubala, Babo, Navazi, we value Runako, or Rayo. Yes, singa mo mla biyo doctor Hilda Mani ba maya kayemba manager kayemba ababa kavu na buna una kuruari la ba singo vunji ba wede ohona lebo Francis Zake wali na ababa ka abala la ba njio una kuruari ro o ba ba deva zim retreat yoye ba ba tuva jita na yenga mo Uganda ba rulimi oru siri ka ba zimu una kuruari ro o kula ba nga team na ingaba ba kubi ba tesa ili guanga o amu bi ba tesa zani ili chivina cha national unit platform president. Muri de biayo gede onako orwariro e abakala si de bintu bingi nyo omubade okwekuma na dalo kolebyo abatuze obaba na Uganda bye baba londera okukola yabasabye okulekira okwegulumiza e abasabye okulekira okwegulumiza era baleme kwegulumiza kwetu alanti ba wagulu nyo wabula na bategeza anti baberenga abalonzi ababa londa che baba lagira okukola obaba berenga bo che bali baleme kwe gulumi za kore ozanti bachita laba sabi obutagula obutalo oza kuntu ya beyo mulia mamoto kanama yumba ii na wagama musoke mkule laba antu ibia mamoto kanama gebei na ama yumba mbive ku baganda mange musoke mkule le edi avantu present robert chagran center mu ayogede vinji nyo baganda mange ayogede vinji nyo na wagama bantu bagenda baso nga mwenwe orenda vika bagenda baso nga mwenwe nga mungezi wa madibatono na ee musoke mkule le avantu yebi mkwebio muna nge ebi bade mu kitundu ekisose ekyo lusiri ko mulabi wa geto tv uh, tugena maso no kuweleza na tera ne kiriza nsoke nkome wano mpumulemu na tera amanya nze buganda ronald mugenyi muzukuru wana kere bukerekere ombala siria mamba na yenga amazinywa geto tv to simbu day